Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Using Data Science to Find Love webinar. Tim, our resident love consultant, will be taking us through how best to prepare for speed dating using data science and Yellowfin. No longer will you be embarrassed about not matching with anyone while speed dating as you'll know your chances even before walking in the room. So let's have a closer look at the model and predictions this afternoon. Will this boost Tim's ego for the next speed dating session, or should he just save the embarrassment and stay home on the couch? Thanks, Roger. I really tried to tweak my responses to get a better prediction for matches. However, you just can't trade out the truth, eh? We'll take you through my results towards the end of this webinar. Um, do you want to run us through the agenda for today, Roger? Yeah, sure, Tim. So the agenda for the webinar today is as follows. Tim, in this case, our wannabe data scientist, is going to go and introduce you to the CRISP DM methodology. We followed this methodology to create our data science model to analyze the speed dating data. We'll then show you how easy it is to integrate the data science workflow into Yellowfin using our data transformation flows. And finally, we'll take you through how we deployed and productionized it in Yellowfin. You've got tons of flexibility on how you can do this in Yellowfin. This is just one way of going about it. So why don't you explain the CRISP methodology, Tim? No worries. We followed the CRISP DM methodology to complete the speed dating project. The CRISP methodology is a process used for data mining and modeling. It was developed in 1906 and has six major phases. So we'll demonstrate how we followed this methodology throughout the webinar today. The first phase is business understanding. This is where you identify the business problem and any of your project objectives. The next phase is data understanding. So this is initial data collection and activities used to get familiar with your data set. The data preparation phase concerns itself with activities used to construct the final data set, which will be fed into the modeling tool. At the modeling phase, you create the model and use various modeling techniques to create your predictions. The valuation phase evaluates the prediction model and sees if it has achieved the original project objectives and whether it has solved your business problem. In Tim's case, whether he gets a match <laughs> or not. And finally, the deployment phase, where you deploy your model into a production environment like Yellowfin to gain that business value. Roger, you already seem to have spent some time studying this data set and you think you already know my fate regarding my prediction. <laughs> Can you take us through what it's all about? Yeah, absolutely, Tim. So this data set was compiled by two Columbia Business School professors. Data was gathered from participants in speed dating events where attendees would have a four minute first date with every other participant of the opposite sex. At the end of their four minutes, participants were asked if they'd like to see their date again they were also asked to rate their date on six attributes, attractiveness, sincerity, intelligence, fun, ambition, and shared interests. This data set also included questionnaire data gathered from participants at different points in the process, so before, during, and after the dates. The fields captured included demographics, dating habits, self-perception across key attributes, importance of activities, beliefs on what others found valuable in a mate, as well as lifestyle information. We limited the data set to 200 dating events. Um, Tim, Tim loves a bit of speed dating, so why don't you explain how we use the first step in the CRISP methodology? We'd love to. No worries. So what was the first and most important phase of the methodology? What was our business problem? Our business problem was, what do I need to do to give me the best opportunity to successfully match with someone? Realistically, a common question most people would be asking themselves prior to speed dating. And this is where Roger and I really wanted to focus the attention. By solving this, we would be able to give our participants more confidence before walking into speed dating, or even save them time by not showing up. The next step, we combined data understanding and preparation together. To understand our speed dating data, we needed to analyze the data set to determine which fields were going to be the most relevant. This would then contribute to the prediction model producing the most accurate prediction and would help us with our project objectives and business problem. So we decided to select the fields that were only going to be asked prior to the speed dating event. I wanted to go in with the best chance possible, even if it was worryingly low. In Tim's case, so, so low. Thanks, mate. Once we had confirmed what fields we were going to use, we then used Yellowfin's data transformation to prepare the data. 
the transformation outputted fields to a SQL database that would be used later by our prediction model. Once this was completed, we used Yellowfin's rich visualization capability to then further explore the data to find initial insights and develop the hypothesis. Perfect, and let's show you how easily all of this was done in Yellowfin. No worries, so just moving into Yellowfin, we get to our data transformation. So the first data transformation prepares our speed dating data for the prediction model. Yellowfin's transformation tool gives you a lot of flexibility on how you want to prepare this data, and you'll see this when I show you the fields I'm working with. The first input step extracts a delimited file on a server. You have other protocols available to suit your production environment setup if you would rather extract elsewhere. For example, a lot of people may want to extract from a database source. The fields that we chose for the prediction model were the following. The match column, which states a zero for no match and one for a match. We use this for our default objective field in the prediction model, which was used for the supervised learning. Participant age, Roger and I believe this would be a big influencing factor in getting a match or not. Dating goal, the participant's goal or objective for showing up to the speed dating. There are a few choices, but mainly this is whether a participant was looking for a serious relationship or even just going to the event for fun. Uh, next was number of dates, so how often a participant would go out over a period of time, and then number of times going out, so how many times a person would go out, but not necessarily on a date, just in general. This We thought this would potentially impact the prediction based on personality. Next, we had activity importance. So on a scale of one to 10, how important these activities were to people? One being least important, and 10 being excessively important. Some activities were sports, watching TV, exercising, and even visiting museums. Key attributes, which is at the back, um, out of the five attributes, we participants were allocated 100 points in total on what attributes they thought were really important to them. They could distribute however they wanted. So for example, you could allocate 100 points to attraction and zero to the rest of the attributes if you really felt that inclined. And finally, wave. We only wanted to concentrate on the first speed dating wave, which was 200 dating events. But if we wanted to include more waves, we could easily use the transformation step filter to increase the size of the data set. I bet if Tim gets a terrible prediction, we'll end up back here adjusting the number of waves. <laughs> oh, you got me. As mentioned above, we used a filter and a split for our transformation steps. Our filter transformation just sorts the data by the first wave. And then once we had the data, we then split out the wave field as it wasn't going to be utilized in the prediction model. Finally, we outputted our prepared data to a SQL database, which would then be used by our PMML model. Brilliant, Tim. Well, let's show them what we originally thought the prediction model would rank as the most important out of that data set. So we created a hypothesis dashboard to really understand our data a little bit further um, before creating that PMML model. And of course, we wanted to give me the best prediction ever. Tim, unless you're a fighter pilot, you're going to need all the help you can get, mate. <laughs> if only I was a jet fighter pilot, <laughs> eh? Anyways, we wanted to explore different areas and wanted to see if we could really identify any fields that were going to have a big impact on our prediction. We started off with seeing if there are any correlations or match between age and attraction, which is here. The trend seemed to say that it, as you get older, attraction becomes more important to you. And we found this really strange considering it should be the other way around, right? Exactly right. We, um, considering that the data set was mainly made up of uni students, we thought it would be the other way around. Next, we created bubble charts to understand if a match was highly influenced by intelligence or shared interests, and what was the outcome, Roach? Yeah, so Tim and I couldn't find any pattern or trend to indicate a better chance of matching with someone on any of these attributes. Finally, however, we looked at matches based on the participants' dating goals, and well, the results did line up with what we thought. So your probability of getting a match was just much higher if you were looking for a serious relationship compared to looking for just something fun to do. Tim, let's take them through how we tackled the modeling and evaluation phases of the CRISP methodology. So modeling and evaluation. 
We created the predictive model in an application called BigML, which was used using a random forest algorithm to create a classification model, which utilized that match as a default target for supervised learning. So today I'll demonstrate you how we use that PML model in the data transformation flow. And the beauty with Yellowfin is that it actually doesn't matter what applications you use to create and maintain your predictive model in. If the tool you're using can export the model to PMML format, you'll be able to deploy it into Yellowfin. Yellowfin supports other data science software, including H2O AI, and we also work with data science formats such as PFA, and you can even create R scripts and use them too. These are all available in the transformation step in the data transformation flow within Yellowfin. We then use Big ML to evaluate the data model that we had created. So we found that the predictive distribution favored not matching someone more. It also seemed that participant answers to activities were really important factors in the probability of getting a match. To potentially fine tune the data model in the future, we could look at feeding more data, um, dating data through enabling the more waves um, on our first data transformation flow through adjusting that filter. So how did we deploy all this, Roger? Yeah, man. so we use data transformations. Tim, are you able to take us through it? All right. So as Roger has stated, we used another transformation in Yellowfin to interact with our exported PMML predictive model. This allowed us to support a rich processing pipeline for our data science workflow. We used another data science data source for our predictions, which would be fed into the PML model. The PMML model that would then output our match probability. Finally, to productionize our data science workflow, we set up a schedule. Um, this schedule was to occur fortnightly on a Monday, and any successful notifications would be sent to myself, and anything that failed would be sent to the system administrator. So this really completes our data science workflow in the elephant. But Roger, where did this data source come from? My mind is really fuzzy on how all this happened. Easy done. So, well, Tim, for a bit of a laugh, we decided that you'd go up against Romeo to see who would come out with the better predictions. So the pretend backstory to all of this is Tim was hanging out with his fictional mate, Romeo, prior to a speed dating event. They've gone up to the speed dating organizer and asked for the speed dating survey questions as well as the participants' answers. Of course, Tim paid the organizer a bit of cash on the side <laughs> for this upfront material. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> oh, mate, it's okay. Nowhere near the cost of the speed dating event itself. So Romeo seems to have tabs on himself, fair enough, and believes Tim has absolutely no chance going up against him. But let's see. So the bet has been decided and first drinks on the person with the lowest match prediction. But before we showcase the result, let's get Tim to walk us through the data transformation using the PMML model in Yellowfin. Not a problem at all. So we'll go to that transformation that has that PML prediction. And we'll wait for that to load. So as you can see, we load. So you can see Romeo and I have answered all the speed dating survey questions. Well, actually, Romeo forgot to answer some of the part of the survey. But look, we're not going to use that in the prediction model. Yellowfin's data transformation tool can easily split that out for us using the split transformation step. So we'll run that. Fantastic. So now we have no blank response from Romeo. So the next transformation step is to run the actual PMML model. The, this PMML file has been loaded from a file path which is located on a server. We've configured the model input by putting our input field, so mine and Romeo's answers here, and through it, and we've matched the model field. So our model field output is a match prediction, which is our default target, which is at the bottom of the PML model. When we run the PML model transformation step, it'll run the data set through the model and output the match predictions for us in a column match. So I'll just run that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide that prediction from the transformation as we want to show you that on the dashboard. Finally, uh, we've outputted the results to a SQL Server database. And to make sure it's deployed and ready in a production environment, we have set up a schedule for this to run fortnightly. So any more predictions that are added to this data source will be picked up in the schedule and run through the PMML prediction model. 
Perfect. Now what we've all been waiting for. It's Romeo versus Tim on a match-off against who can get the better match prediction. Now let's see the results on the Yellowfin dashboard. Load it up. So we started off with the model summary report. This report shows the weighting of the most influential factors within the prediction model. Tim and I were actually really surprised about how activities were amongst the most important factors when we thought people's attributes would come in at the highest. Yeah, I know. Um, how's attractiveness not in the top five? <laughs> I know, I know. So the top three associated to the participants' importance regarding activities was shopping came in at first at 25.85% importance, followed by going to museums, which is the second, at 24.51%, and clubbing came in at third at 15.73%. So uh, last time I recall, Tim, don't you hate shopping and going to museums? Yeah, look, I'm not a huge fan. Uh, that's awkward. Um, <laughs> how does Romeo feel about those things? Um, oh, he likes going, unfortunately. <laughs> well, you're certainly right, Tim. Romeo has said he really likes shopping. He gave that 7 out of 10. Museums, he gave 8 out of 10. And clubbing, a 9 out of 10. Whereas to you, Tim, uh, none of those are really that important to you. You rank these activities as two to three out of ten when it came to importance. Oh, oh that's awkward. <laughs> and uh, the winner is, drumroll please, Tim. Romeo with a match prediction of 75.55% and Tim with an 11% match <laughs> prediction. <laughs> no, first round's on me. Look, to be honest, how was I ever going to challenge Romeo in a match-off? That's just nonsense. So just going back to the PowerPoint, in summary today, we've walked you through consuming a data science model within Yellowfin using the CRISPR DM methodology. So the steps we went through were the following. We identified our problem. So what do I need to do to give me the best opportunity to successfully match with someone? We then used Yellowfin to understand and prepare our data using hypothesis uh, visualizations and the data transformation tool. We then created our PMML predictive model, which was smoothly integrated into our Yellowfin data transformation tool. And we evaluated that predictive model using BigML by analyzing the predictive, predictive distribution. Did it solve our business problem? It sure did. We then deployed and productionized our data science flow using the data transformation tool and using Yellowfin's scheduling capabilities. Perfect. Thanks for that, Tim. So it looks like we've got a couple of questions that have just come through while we've been um, talking. Um, I'll just go to the first one. So the first question we've been asked is, what do you guys mean by productionization? So productionization, uh, to me, yeah. I think generally means to put something from a prototype or design into production. So today we showed a basic example of how you could utilize a data science model within Yellowfin in a production ready environment. Cool, thanks Tom. Um, the next question that's just kind of, we scrolled to, um, we saw you utilize a PMML data science model in the data transformations. What other data science tools slash formats do you support? Tim? Um, so we support a range of data science tools and formats, uh, including H2O AI um, and PFA. Anything else you can think yeah, of? Yeah, we also support R scripts. Yep. yep. Um, as we're kind of running out of time, let's finish off with one more question, Tim. Um, we'll, of course, get back to everyone through email. And the, the next question is, what made us go with the speed dating data set? Well, I'll let you answer that one. <laughs> yeah, easy done. So um, we, we decided to use the speed dating data set yes, as yesterday was Valentine's Day, of course. So naturally, everyone's going to be talking about love. And the data set we stumbled across seemed like a really good example to try and run a data model against it. And All that right. brings us to the end. Thanks for everyone for watching our webinar.